Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Great. <laughs> Someone's doing great. We're glad you're here. We're thankful that you came out to worship today, and we're excited to see you. We have a few quick announcements for you. The first one is that we are in the process of update, updating our video and sound equipment, and we are giving you an opportunity to help in that process. If you're willing to make a small donation or a large donation to that, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, the video equipment has been here over 20 years, as well as the sound equipment, and so we are desperately in need of updates, and especially for the live streaming now that we have to do, as you can see, most of our worshipers are not in the building, but a lot of them are online now. And so we have to make sure that we work toward that as well as worshiping in person. We want to just continue to remind you to RSVP, and obviously most of you probably RSVP to come to the worship service. We want to just let you know, though, that if you RSVP and you can't come, it's not a big deal. And if you forget to RSVP, you can still call as late as 7.45 in the morning on a Sunday morning. We have staff here in the morning to take those calls. So it's not something that is set in stone. A lot of people have been saying they, they're concerned about RSVPing, so they just don't and they don't come. And we don't want you to do that. So just remember that you can always RSVP, not come if something pops up, call at the last minute, it's okay. Um, also next week is Communion Sunday. And we are inviting you to please bring from home a baggie with your communion bread and either uh, water or juice that you can use for communion. It will be consecrated. It is perfectly good to go that way if you bring it here and the pastor consecrates it. And we will have communion together differently, but still have communion together. So we will still be able to worship together that way. Finally, uh, we have a super cool announcement that uh, Pastor Dan's family welcomed their little boy into the world on Friday. And as you can see, he is adorable. His name is Emmett Alfred Lebo. And you can see his statistics there. So <laughs> he, was, uh, he was born, everything went well, everybody's doing well. Pastor Dan is off today just to kind of help with the transition of getting ready to bring Emmett home and all of those good things. He'll be back next week to help with communion. And um, Pastor Sean's gonna be doing just a little mini, uh, mini sermon series this time around. So that's it for the announcements today. I encourage you to just wave to your neighbors. Sorry we can't shake hands, bump elbows, all that good stuff, but we're glad you're here. Thanks for coming and enjoy wonderful world, wonderful words of life. <laughs> Thanks for coming.
Please join me in the call to worship. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious and loving God, we stand in awe of you. You are holy, you are worthy, you are perfect, you are God. But our hearts often are indifferent, our wills often are enslaved, and our actions betray our confession of faith. We are sinners in desperate need of your grace and love. Only by your grace can we stop the misdirection of our lives and turn ourselves back toward your loving arms. Embrace us with your loving kindness. Understand us with your compassion. Complete us with your redemption. Encourage us with your spirit. In humility and with thanksgiving, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now join together, humming, singing in your heart, nearer my God to thee. Good morning, everybody. I have to tell you, it has been, I figured it out last night, it has been literally seven months since I stood here with people out there and talked, so it's been a while. So it's, it's actually nice to see people looking back at me, even though by the end, I don't know, maybe you won't be, I won't be so happy you're staring at me like I'm saying something strange, like now. Uh, anyway, I, I, I wanted to let you know, for if you haven't been here before, uh, uh, it, after, you know, since we've reopened, uh, I'm not going to preach with a mask on uh, so you can actually hear and understand what I say. Uh, I wanted to get the, like, the SeaWorld splash zone down here so you can stay away from this area right here. Uh, they said that, you know, it's like 20 feet or something like that or 25 feet that... Uh, you can actually send something out. So uh, we're fine. We're fine. You're, everybody's fine today. But I just wanted to let you know that. I wanted to make sure you understood why I was not wearing a mask. Now, anyway, we are going to talk for the next, uh, this week and next week, we're going to talk about changing and adapting in a world that, uh, frankly, we need to change and adapt in pretty constantly now. And we're going to talk about uh, just in general some thoughts this week and in, in, in changing the way we maybe think about change. And then next week we're going to focus really on worship. And I will be speaking next week, but uh, Pastor Dan will be uh, celebrating communion with you next week uh, because I know he really looks forward to celebrating communion with you in person next week. So this week we're going to talk about change, and I don't know what you guys think, but when I think of change, something comes to my mind immediately. As soon as I said we're going to talk about changing, I thought of one thing. Same thing you guys are thinking of right now. I know it is, right? You thought of the Brady Bunch, right? Didn't you think of that? That's what I thought of. I thought of the Brady Bunch. Do you, do you remember the Brady Bunch episode? Do you remember this episode? See if you remember where they entered a singing contest. Yep. 
They I entered a singing contest because they wanted to win. I didn't know this, had to, had to look it up, or had to actually had Joyce look it up. I didn't really do it. Uh, they, uh, they entered a singing contest because they wanted to win a silver platter for their, you know, they wanted to win this, uh, get a silver platter for their parents. And so they had to enter the singing contest. But one of the prizes was if you win, you get to record the song in a recording studio. And they win and they're practicing to go to the recording studio, and do you remember what happens? They start practicing and somebody's hitting clunkers. You know, real, the notes are terrible. And as it turns out, it's the middle boy, Peter, and his voice is starting to change. And so it's a horrible moral dilemma for the Brady Bunch. Do they, do just the five of the kids go and sing without Peter, or do they just scrap the whole thing? But what did they do? Do you remember what they did? They changed the song, remember? They changed the song and they sang the song. So here is the song they sang. Autumn turns to winter and then winter turns to spring. It's not just the season, you know it goes for everything. It's even true for voices when boys begin to grow. You gotta take a lesson from Mother Nature, and if you do, you'll know. When it's time to change, then it's time to change. Don't fight the tide, come along for the ride, don't you see? When it's time to change, you've got to rearrange who you are and what you're gonna be. Uh, do you remember, uh, did anybody have a jacket like Greg had there? Anybody have a shirt like that? Uh, <laughs> I did not. I did not have a shirt like that. I did have one like, uh, I think it was Peter was wearing the kind of like the blue silk shirt with all the patterns in it. I think I might have had one of those. Anyway. Uh, it, it's a fun way to think about it, but it actually is a good illustration. What they did is change happened, something happened that changed the way they were going to do things, and they adapted to that change. They adapted to it and, and, and overcame that situation and were able to continue uh, as not quite as if nothing had happened, but they, they moved on. And I, that's really the lesson I want to talk about today, but from a spiritual standpoint, of course. And so let's talk a little bit about change because the thing about change is it's constant. We may not like it. We may not notice it. We may not want to go along with change, but it is constant. It is always changing around us. Things are always changing. Things are always moving. Things are always becoming different around us. Some of the change is very slow, isn't it? Some of the change is very slow. It's, it's almost like erosion. I think of this when, when you go to a favorite vacation spot, for example, and you haven't been there for three or four or five years and you go back, and it's different, isn't it? It's, it's the same, but it's different. Or you go back to maybe uh, where you went to high school or college, it's, you haven't been there in a long time. It's the same, but it's not the same. It's changing, not real quickly all the time. A lot of times it's very slow change but you notice it if you haven't been there for a while. If you're there, if you're in the midst of it, you really don't notice it because it's just part of the daily landscape. I was thinking about this. I know when Joyce and I came to Palmyra, and, and I know you guys are in the same boat as this, you know, that Walmart wasn't there. That Walmart, it was just a big empty field. And, and now we don't even think about it. We don't even think about it. The Walmart is there. It's been there for a long time. But at the time, that was a big change, but now it just doesn't seem that big. It was just kind of a slow, gradual change. But other change, and I think this, that's the easy change to deal with. We can deal with that most of the time. That kind of slow, gradual change, we ease into it. That's not really where we have a problem. What we have a problem is with the sudden change, isn't it? The things that happen right now. And I think that in all of your heads right now, and I know in mine, we have a pretty obvious example of that, don't we? I will not ever forget. I, I really don't think I will ever forget this in my life with uh, the pandemic. 
Uh, part of my job is when I, I probably, before this started, I was on the road. Our firm, our law firm, represents only school districts. That's it. We only represent school districts, so I have to go out to school districts a lot. Uh, not so much now, obviously, on Zoom all the time. But in those times, I would go out at least two, sometimes three days, sometimes more a week, out to school districts. and. I'll remember the day, Friday the 13th. Of course it was Friday the 13th, March 13th. <laughs> what else would it be? And I was at a school district and it was probably almost two hours away and we had this really contentious, nasty meeting that morning. And I left that meeting and by the time, from the time I left that meeting to the time I got home about two hours later, the entire world changed. Everything completely changed from the time I left there to the time I got home. In a two hour period of time, everything was different. Everything, we got locked down, everything was totally changed. But we adapted, didn't we? We adapted to that. And that's kind of what I want to get to the point of today because the fact of the matter is, things change all the time. And although we, don't necessarily like it, we are actually designed to change and adapt to those changes. I say that because there is a profound and obvious change in our lives that God expects to happen to us. When we accept Christ in our lives, God expects a major change. It can be gradual, it can be sudden, there's no right or wrong way to accept Christ in your life and to be transformed into this new being in Christ. There's no right way to do that, but God expects us, when it does happen, to change and to adapt to that change. He expects it of us. Therefore, what I think is if God expects that change in us, he designed us that way. He built us to adapt to that major change. And if we can adapt to that major change, which is as major as anything in life, we can adapt to any change, and we do adapt to any change. But let's talk about this idea scripturally, the idea that when we accept Christ, our lives are changed. I have some scripture for you here. Uh, I'm going to use Ephesians. I'm going to use uh, Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and, and, and he is writing to them, talking about what happens and what God expects when we accept Christ in our life. And I want you to pay attention to this scripture. We have about 10 verses here. It's, a little, it's, it's rather lengthy. But I want you to pay attention because notice the list of things that Paul puts into this letter. Notice the list of things that he is saying God expects of us. The changes in our life that God expects of us when we accept Christ. Paul says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Not let the sun go down while you are still angry and not give, do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ 
God forgave you. You see this list. You see this total, all of these things. Yes, some of it, some of it is good advice no matter what. Some of it is good advice for living life. But God expects us to change. God expects us to adapt to that change in our life. One more here, one, one more piece of scripture I have for you, uh, just to uh, kind of finalize the point. If I can get it to flip here. <laughs> there we go. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. My point in this is that God has designed us to change and to adapt to change. I think it's important for us to understand that because it's a mindset that we have. When the world changes around us, when, when there's change swirling around us, and, and that is happening all the time, things are constantly changing around us, whether it be slow or fast, it's happening virtually every day around us. Change is happening. And when we get very upset by that and we're concerned and we get nervous and upset about change, but I think it would help us to understand what we're going over here. The fact that we are designed to change and adapt to that change, I think gives us that strength to go through the change, to make it through that change, and to adapt to that change. Uh, human beings are incredible when you really think about it. We do things, we adapt to things that we at least initially think we can never adapt to that. When this pandemic hit, we thought, oh my word, I'm locked in my house, what do I do? I, there was, I heard panic from all over the place. I, I, you know, I know that we thought, what are we going to do? How are we supposed to go and get anything that we need? What we? And we found out pretty quickly, didn't we, that we adapt. We change our lives. We have somebody go shopping for us and bring our groceries to us. We have somebody deliver food to us. Whatever it may take to get through this, we adapt to it. And the important thing here today, the first point, because I have two major points, my first major point is this. We need to have a changed mindset about change. We need to understand we are designed to change. We are created to change. God expects us to adapt to things in life, and we do. That should give us the confidence to face any change that comes our way. But that leads to the second point. And if there's change all around us, think about this. If everything is changing around us, we need perspective on that change. Because if we're just kind of drifting with those changes, we lose perspective on what's going on. We need an anchor, don't we? We need something solid that we can hold on to that is not changing. We need that in our lives. I think you know where I'm going with this, but, but think about it. I believe that this is why we as human beings crave some type of routine in our lives, some type of normalcy. I almost guarantee you that everybody here does the same thing. We, we tend to get up at the same time every morning, don't we? We tend to do the exact same things in the exact same order every morning. We have a routine because that is, I believe, us reaching out for something like this, an anchor in the time when things are changing around us, no matter how much the world changes, if I can keep that routine in the morning, if I can just do those things that are normal, then the world seems normal. It's easier to adapt to those changes that are occurring around me. And we have, don't we? We have the ultimate anchor. We have the anchor, the anchor that never changes, that is always there for us to hold on to. And say, no matter how much the world is changing around us, God is the same. God was, is, and always will be the same. He is that anchor we can hold on to. He is that, that steadiness, that unchanging thing in our lives. When everything seems to be swirling around out of control, this is what allows us to adapt to those changes. The fact that we can hold on to God, that we know no matter what happens around us, no matter how much we change, no matter how much the world changes around us, God is the same 
and is with us. And I have some scripture uh, to share with you for that. I have some scripture to share with you about God being our anchor because that is an important thing that we have to keep in our minds and in our hearts, that God is the same. He's the same God we worshiped 10 years ago. He's the same God our ancestors worshiped. He's the same God of the Bible that we read about in Scripture. He was, is, and always will be the same. A couple Old Testament verses first. This is from Numbers. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? This is saying that God is not like us. God, when God speaks, his promise is kept. When he says he is going to act, he does. He is our anchor in that regard. Next, this is from Malachi. It's uh, Malachi verse uh, 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 6, sorry. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. Finally, from Hebrews, if you want some New Testament, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So the fact of the matter is we have Scripture that makes it clear that God does not change. As much as the world changes around us, think about about this for a second. The God that we worship, And we can worship him in many different ways. We're going to get into that next week. But the God that we worship in the day and age of the cell phone and social media and, you know, this is being live streamed right now. There are people who aren't even here that are watching this right now. That same God is the same God that Moses worshiped. It's the same God that when Jesus walked this earth, that He said, you know, the Father is there. The Father, I I worship the Father in all things that I do. I honor him in all things that I do. It's the same God that that Paul worshipped when he was writing a lot of these, uh, the scripture that we read today. And it's the same God today that we worship. That is that anchor that we need in our lives to make sure that we understand that even though things may get crazy around us, even though the world is changing around us, God is still the same. He does not change. Our relationship with Christ may change. But he doesn't. Does that make sense? That's the final kind of point I want to make. I want to make that point that our relationship with Christ still changes. Scripture out there tells us when we first become Christians, what we are being given is the equivalent of spiritual milk, like a baby. A baby doesn't eat, you know, doesn't sit down and eat a big steak dinner. And that's what we do when we first come to Christ. But as we grow and mature, God expects that relationship again. We're designed to change, and he expects that relationship to change. But it's not Christ who changes. It's not God who changes. It's us. The change occurs in us, not God. And I think when we realize that, when we realize that God is, was, is, and always will be the same, that he is, always has been and will be the God of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness, when we realize that, then we realize that when changes are occurring in our world, when things are happening around us that we may not like all the time, because that is one thing that we probably can all agree about with change. Some changes are good and we like them, but a whole lot of them we We just don't accept or like right away, do we? But God is saying, it's okay. I designed you to adapt. And no matter what, no matter how crazy it it seems out there, hold on to this God that we have. Hold on to your relationship with Christ. Even though that relationship changes, hopefully for the better, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to walk more closely with him but he doesn't change. We can count on him no matter what. He makes promises to us. He keeps them. He promises to be our rock, our foundation. We can rely on that. So we need to understand in this world of change, God doesn't change. We do. 
We're designed to do it, but it's okay because no matter what, we worship the powerful, the mighty, the compassionate, the loving God of the Bible, of today, and of tomorrow as well. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you as a humble people. We come to you on bended knee as we always do, Lord. In a world of change, and especially, Lord, our, our world over the past six months or so, Lord, has been changing seemingly all the time, and it, it's difficult at many times, Lord. All kinds of things have changed, and, and it's hard for us sometimes, Lord, to understand and to keep up with those changes and to, and, and to really agree with them all the time, Lord, and to be on board. But, Lord, we understand, we understand that you designed this world, and it's going to change, and you designed us, and we can adapt to it, mainly, Lord, because we can cling to you at all times. And we thank you so much, Lord, for, for being there in every way for us. And Lord, we ask your blessing on us. Guide our thoughts, our words, our actions, so that we may continue to be shining examples of you in this ever-changing world. And Lord, a special blessing on those who are here today and those who are watching us at any time during this and, and everybody in the Gravel Hill congregation, Lord, and, and in our town and in our, in our area and in our state and in our country and in our world, Lord, we, we ask a blessing on all of those that your calming hand and your guiding hand be seen more now than ever before. And we ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to leave today, we encourage you again to uh, sing in your heart or hum along with our final song. And as you know, we've been doing this song for the last four weeks as just a song to take you out from this place and maybe remember the words and help get you through the week. Um, next month, we're gonna do a different song at the end. So this will be our last Sunday for On Eagle's Wings. I hope that it has edified you and uh, helped you get through your weeks in between worshiping. So please hum along, sing in your heart, On Eagle's Wings. So please accept this benediction. Go from here. Understand that although the world changes, you have been designed to adapt to those changes. Cling tightly to our wonderful, loving, fantastic God who will always be there for you. And go into the world and let your words and your life be an example of Christ to all those who come in contact with you and take the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit with you. Amen. Thank you, everybody.